Good morning, Bacon Academy. Coming up on today's show, College Knowledge Night is here, the end of a week-long hostage crisis in America, and Comet Ison prepares to make a dazzling pass through our solar system. All that and more now on the Bacon Academy Student News. Today is Wednesday, February 6th, 2013. I'm Bernie Denler. And I'm Matt McAllister. Bacon's Guidance Department is hosting its annual College Knowledge Night tonight from 6 to 8.30 p.m. The evening will be broken into two parts. The first part being an informational session fair with college representatives present to provide information and answer questions. The second part will feature informational workshops as Bacon staff and financial aid experts provide advice on junior year planning, understanding financial aid, using Naviance, college essay writing, and career planning. College Knowledge Night is open to all Bacon students and parents. Valentine's flowers and chocolate sales are continuing today with order forms available with officers at the sale booth. Singing Valentines are also on sale for $3 each during the lunch waves. Flower and chocolate sales end tomorrow. Students with talent and looking to show it off should consider auditioning for Star Search. Auditions are mandatory for prospective participants and are being held in the cafeteria today and tomorrow. Forms are available in the office with Ms. Keogh Green and Mr. Manning. The U.S. Postal Service announced today plans to cut Saturday delivery in an effort to save nearly $2 billion per year. The agency, which had struggled financially since the rise of email and other forms of digital communication, drastically reduced the amount of mail being processed and delivered, will continue to deliver packages six days a week, and post offices will remain open on Saturdays. The cutback is expected to begin in August. On Tuesday, White House Press Secretary Jay Carney defended the administration's drone attack policy at length. He answered repeated questions after a Justice Department memo came to light that showed more lenient rules for drone strikes against some U.S. citizens working with alleged terrorists abroad. He noted that the reason for such attacks are to prevent attacks on the United States and to save American lives. We conduct those strikes because they are necessary to mitigate ongoing actual threats to stop plots and to prevent future attacks and, again, save American lives, Carney said. He also went on to explain that these attacks are legal and wise and that the government takes great care in their decision to pursue an al-Qaeda terrorist to avoid the loss of innocent lives. Lawmakers in the state of Illinois have begun to push to legalize same-sex marriage before Valentine's Day. A measure approving same-sex marriage was passed by the Senate committee with a party-line vote, nine Democrats in favor, five Republicans opposed, paving the way for a vote by the upper chamber on the matter next week. However, a looming financial crisis in the state could derail plans to pass the bill before Valentine's Day. If the legislation is passed, Illinois will become the tenth state to legalize same-sex marriage. However, under the Defense of Marriage Act, Act passed in 1996, no same-sex marriages are recognized by the federal government. Turning to world news, a massive earthquake has struck the Solomon Islands east of Kira Kira and has produced a localized tsunami. David Jepson, a seismologist from Geoscience Australia, has stated that a 7.9 magnitude earthquake hit the Santa Cruz Islands approximately 250 miles from the Solomon Islands. Five have been reported dead, including a boy dead at 10 to 12 years of age. The death toll is expected to rise. A Tunisian opposition politician, Shorki Belaid, was killed outside his home on Wednesday, causing thousands of protesters to gather in the streets and the of the capital and in Sidi Bouzid. The identity of the attacker is unknown, but many are condemning the killing as a political assassination and a strike against the Arab Spring Revolution. Tunisia was the first Arab nation to overthrow its leaders and hold free elections as uprisings spread around the region two years ago. Now, due to, an increased, due to increased tensions between the Islamists and secularists such as Belaid, many protesters are calling for the fall of their current elected government. A month-long French offensive has killed hundreds of Islamist fighters in Mali, according to Jean Yves Le Drian, the French defense minister. At Mali's request, France launched the offensive against militants in its former colony last month. The ground and air campaign has sent Islamist fighters who had seized the northern region fleeing into the vast desert. French-led troops now control Timbuktu and the city of Gayo, along with the swath in between the two that was an Islamist stronghold for almost a year. French troops are expected to begin withdrawing from the war-torn region in March and leave the conflict up to African forces. China has expressed serious concerns after North Korea threatened to perform a third nuclear test in response to sanctions imposed after a December rocket launch. 
China is calling for the denuclearization of the Korean Peninsula and insists that North Korea must face further consequences if it goes through with the test. North Korea, who considers China its only major ally, has announced that it will conduct its third nuclear test, a threat that now seems imminent. Finally, in science news, on Tuesday, the U.S. Department of Agriculture s released two comprehensive reports that synthesized the scientific literature on climate change effects and adaptation strategies for U.S. agriculture and forests. While U.S. agriculture and resource management have long histories of successful adaptation to climate variability, the accelerating pace and intensity of climate change presents new challenges to be addressed according to the USDA. Beyond 2050, changes are expected to include shifts in crop production areas, increases in pest control expenses, and greater disease prevalence. These improvements will require additional research to identify better forestry and ag system management practices, to develop stress tolerant plant and animal species, and to establish new approaches to conserve soil and water resources. Although there is currently no specific agenda, these reports are the beginning of a cleaner future for the United States. NASA's Deep Impact Probe has captured an image of Comet Ison, which is being dubbed the Comet of the Century by some observers and scientists. Ison, like most comets, is primarily made up of dust and ice and is expected to make a swing past the sun this November. When it does, the comet could put on a dazzling light show if it does not fade or break up. Some forecasters have suggested that the comet could appear from Earth as bright as the full moon, as the ices and dusts of the comet are heated up. Fear not, though. Ison poses no threat to the Earth. That's all for today. Join us again tomorrow for more school, local, U.S., and world news. And remember, you can catch us online, too, at youtube.com slash VA Student News.